What's good guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys about car photography. So if you guys are amateurs or even skilled, I'm gonna give you guys five tips that will get you started or improve your skills. So tip number one guys, if you're a car photographer, automotive photographer, you're definitely gonna have to get yourself one of these. This is a polarizer filter, but it's gonna let you decide where the reflections are on your car. So here's a quick video of me playing around with the polarizer filter. So basically you can turn the polarizer filter and it chooses where to cut the reflections. This is good in this example here because you got this black car which is really reflective. If I did have a polarizer filter in this particular shoot, I could have easily turned the polarizer filter and cut that whole reflection out of that building. That way the car would look ultra smooth and less distracting too. Tip number two, we're gonna talk lenses. For someone beginning out, I recommend a 24 to 70 or 28 to 75 like what I've got. That is gonna give you lots of range to do all your photos. But there's a few other lenses that I will talk about that are really good, especially prime lenses like this 85. So these first three shots are all shot on the 28 to 75 with Tamron. You can also get like a 24 to 70 by Sony, but I chose a cheaper option and it works perfectly fine. I recommend you start off with a lens like this just because you can get like heaps of angles because of the focal range. The next shot of these three supercars are shot on an 85. You can also go something like a 125 prime lens even a 50mm prime lenses. They're all really good because they're super sharp. They've got low aperture, so you can get like heaps of detail shots as well. The bad thing with the prime lens is that you're kind of limited with the range of shots you can go for. All right, you guys, tip number three, we're gonna talk about aperture. Some people don't think this is important, but for especially something big like a car, it's gonna be important because if you have a low aperture, you're gonna have a lot of blur in your image. So you're gonna wanna put your aperture from minimum 3.5 up to like 5.6 to get the whole car in focus. Unless you guys are getting detailed shots on like emblems, badges, even interior shots, you can drop your aperture low so you can get that, that nice and blurry background. But for exterior shots, 3.5 to like 5.6, even a little bit higher you can, is the best thing to do because you want the whole car in focus and it's very important. In this shot right here guys, the aperture was actually shot at around f4. It's not all that bad, but because it's shot at f4, it's got a shallow depth of field. What that means is that from the focal point, it's only getting a certain amount of, of the image in focus. If I did put a higher f-stop, like 5.6 or even 6 or 7, the depth of field would be a lot larger, which would mean more of the car would be in focus. Tip number 4 is what time to shoot in the day. Nighttime photography is really good, but if you want to shoot in some decent lighting, you do not want to shoot in midday. The harsh lighting will create lots and lots of really bad reflections on top of your car, and it's not flattering. What you want to do is you want to shoot at times when it's sunset, sunrise, and even nighttime. So basically what you guys want to find is soft lighting. Sometimes even at nighttime, some of the street lights will create a really harsh rebound off your car, which you don't want. So soft lighting is really what you guys want. I can give you some examples right here. So in the first two examples right here, we've got PSI Ho and we've got Troy Canyon on his motorbike. With a purple U, the lighting is like so perfect because it's that sunset, which makes a lot of soft lighting. Whereas you've got the Troy Canyon photo on the motorbike, it's not too bad. Like, it's not, a, it's not a horrible photo, but because of the lighting, it's really hard to color grade. And also it's really, really, what's the word? It's kind of saturated. So when you edit, it kind of, it kind of burns out the image. That's a good versus bad example here. The second example, we've got two cars, we've got Unwise and we've got Fat310. Same photo on the left with Unwise, soft lighting, good reflections, looks ultra smooth. Whereas you've got the one on the right, a little bit of different color grade, but it's in direct sunlight. So it's really hard to keep the colors more realistic. And overall, it's just harder to edit, to be honest. So if you get that soft lighting, it's gonna be perfect. If you guys did wanna shoot during the day, sometimes it doesn't matter. Because if you have a day like this where it's lots of overcast, lots of clouds. The sun is basically getting blocked out, acting like a diffuser, which makes your car seem like there's no harsh reflections. Tip 
number five is gonna be about location. Some of you guys might disagree, some of you guys might agree, but location, for me personally, you guys just gotta avoid things like having a dirty floor, like a dirty surface, a dirty road, heaps of lines, things that are distracting, because the car is the subject, and that's what you guys gotta focus on. If you have something that's a bit minimal, a bit more low-key, then it makes your life a lot easier, especially if you wanna get that aesthetic going and make the car look as good as possible. Location is sometimes key. In this first example, we've got, we got Lucas's Golf R. This is not too bad of a photo, you know, like, the only reason why I'm using this as a bad example is because you've got that whole dirt pile that's in front. And if you can get a, a foreground that's a lot more smooth and minimalistic, your photos can turn out a lot better. On the second example, we've got Fahad's 86. Believe it or not, straight through the middle of the road area, there was white road lines. I wish I had the example to show you, but you can imagine how distracting those white lines would have been. If you can do some Photoshop tricks, it can save the image just like that. Third photo is actually unwise again. This is a dope photo. This is a perfect example of a location being good. The foreground's perfectly smooth. Car's nice. The background is not too distracting, but it kind of suits the theme, so it works out well. All right, you guys, if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope this tutorial has helped you guys a lot, especially you guys that are new to our photography or even in general, any photography. Some of these tips could apply too. If you guys wanna see any other videos, please leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe. It's gonna help me a lot, especially when we're gonna get this job full time YouTuber and we can make videos all day every day. So again, have a good day and peace.